that this is code red for humanity. So ito na yung pagkakataon kung saan mag-take tayo ng action bago natin maranasan yung irreversible damage sa climate So change. people here maybe still have an excuse for thinking that it's not as it's not as severe, it's not as, as serious. The 1.5 degrees Celsius limit is very crucial to how the world can move on. Regards sa environment, ang sabi nila is the environment is not their top priority. As simple as that. Because it's not a people versus people kind of thing. It's not even a country versus country problem. It is a people versus ourselves. Wala na ibang pagkakataon. Ito na ang pagkakataon para umaksyon tayong lahat. Climate change is the greatest trial of humanity. It's the greatest war that we have ever faced. Over the years, we have been strongly struggling with the destructive effects of climate change. But in our time today, are we still fighting the same climatic challenges? Climate change, uh, according to the United Nations, refers to the long-term shifts in temperatures and weather patterns. So these shifts may be natural, you know, according to variations in the solar cycle but since the, we found out that since the 1800s we are now experiencing anthropogenic climate change which means human induced climate change may bagyo eh hindi naman katulad sa ngayon ang bagyo yung uh, parang ang bagyo ngayon eh parang pag sinabi talaga bagyo eh nung araw pag sinabi parang umuulan lang ganun ulan hangin um tayo ay nasa crisis na ang tawag dito sa panahon ngayon ay climate crisis sinabi actually ng intergovernmental panel on climate change that this is code red for humanity hindi tayo major contributor ng greenhouse gas but tayo ay isa sa mga bansa naman na naapektuhan ng uh, matinding epekto ng climate change, kagaya nga ng ating napag-uusapan na uh, matitinding mga bagyo. We received reports actually in the past two years that the migration of fish also leaves as the water gets warmer. So they're leaving for more temperate waters. Mayroon pin yun kasi ngayon kasi hagulapin mo pa kung nasa na isda. Kasi dati dito pala sa tabi, Ano na, makakapangisda ka na dito lang sa malapit. Ngayon, nalayo pa kami. Nadayo pa kami sa ibang lugar. And the numbers don't lie. Because we've really seen that there's a lower chance of resuming livelihood in your community after a climate event. No? Eh, lalo yung hindi ka makakapangisda kasi nga, may bagyo. Apektado lahat, pati yung mga kangkungan, yung mga, pang, mga kangkung dito. Lahat, lahat ng hanap buhay dito, apektado. Minsan nga, nagsusunod tulad nung nakarang 2020, tatong sunod-sunod na bagyo tayo. Nakaranas nga ako dito na yung bagyong Glenda. Alos magbagsaka ng mga puno, nagkandabali ang mga sanga. Yung pagkalipas naman nun, inipon ko yung mga sanga, aking ginawang ulay. Siyempre, yung iba nagko-construction. Yung iba, ibang trabaho. Kasi wala dito, walang hanap buhay sa dagat eh. mag iba ka ng hanap buhay. And this is what we were talking about, no? human mobility. If your community is affected by a climate event in a rural area, what does that mean? It means that you have to find another area to live in. If there's biodiversity loss and uh, loss of resources in the area that you live in, then most likely you'll have to go all the way to Manila or an urban area like that. Na undi po kami, na was out po yung bahay namin, wala po natira kahit ano. Ayaw nga po namin sana makapunta rito pero nagpastao na po yun. Kaya po doon kami na likat na un, uh, ano na undoy na yun. So that leads us to, to ask ourselves, is climate change a source of political instability? And then researchers tell us yes. So we have to look, we take a closer look at what happens there. What happens there is uh, LGUs take in more people. So there will be an intrinsic fight for resources, an intrinsic fight for uh, who should live where, should they, li should they be living here, and whether or not uh, they will stay long. So if there's a lot of people, then there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And if there's a lot of work that needs to be done, then there will obviously be spots that we can't 
cover healthcare, education, uh, security. In this manner, what do these developing facts suddenly suggest? Tama ka sa sinabi mo na bakit hanggang ngayon pinag-uusapan at wala pa talagang konkretong action. I think you should look into uh, the root. Saan talaga nagmumula? Sino yes. ang pinagagalingan? Kasi kapag uh, yun ang ma-address natin, then everything will follow. I think people do care about climate change. I think they really do. Even the common person does. It's, you start to ask yourself, what can me as one person do? And then you think about the scale of climate change on a global level. And then you think, but what can me in my what can my entire school do? And then you think about what can my country do at at this global level? And then you start thinking, what can my continent do? And then it's it's a it's what we call climate doomism. Right? You understand climate change. You know what it is. But at the same time, you're not really willing to do anything to combat it or because you know that it's a very heedless cause. Because if we leave it to our politicians, if we leave it to our leaders, then there's just no reason to believe that anything will change un until it's too late. I guess they will take action when the issues become so, so unbearable then I guess they will have to act, but then it will be too late. Thus, what can I do? And what must I do? Clearly, concerned individuals have always been universally outspoken about the possible solutions to climate change. However, are we really doing the right thing? Let's try to reflect. On an individual level, kailangan natin magdemand, kailangan natin magtake action, um, share the knowledge, inform your 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 friends, and then tell them about the real cause of climate change. Ano ba talaga ang nagpapalala ng climate change? At ang pag nagpapalala ng climate change ay yung paggamit natin ng fossil fuel. Napaka importante na lahat tayo ay magkaisa at magtulungan sa pag-solve ng problemang ito dahil hindi lang iilan ang naapektuhan nito kundi tayong lahat. The climate crisis does not respect boundaries. It does not respect social status. Kahit na isang person ka lang, may contribution ka pa rin mayambag. At kung lahat ng tao ay gagawin ito, magiging malaki rin ang part through time. So the National Climate uh, Change Action Plan na nakatlagay nito kung ano yung ating ways upang mabawasan ang ating emission pagdating sa lahat ng greenhouse gas. So isa na rito yung shift natin from traditional um, in energy sources to uh, renewable energy sources. We are not thinking of the day na wala na, we're, we're hopeless, but we are hopeful and we believe that if we will work together na maa-achieve natin yung mga bagay na yun, and kaya kailangan natin na i-deliver yung message na gusto natin sa mga government officials, yung mga people who are in power, na may authority that could create systemic change. Kasi yun yung gusto talaga natin na magkaroon ng systemic change na magmula sa kanila yung pagbubago. Because it's not a people versus people kind of thing. It's not even a country versus country problem. It is a people versus ourselves. Climate change is the greatest trial of humanity. It's the greatest war that we have ever faced. But it also presents the greatest opportunity. So as we're nearing, you know, how to solve climate change, you know, we realize that the climax is our climate action. We are the action. The climax is our climate action. And we are the action itself. With these major actions, are we up for slowing the root cause down, even this could would mean prolonged actions or battles? Or are we up for completely extinguishing the root cause, even this could would mean saying goodbye to modernization and embrace again an ancient life? In that case, we should not be asking if we are doing enough action. The question should be, am I willing to take the action? Are you? Are we?